Welcome to On Air with Cash. Our guest today has appeared in the hit films Air Force One, Yes Man, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Bombshell. He recently portrayed Chick Hearn on the HBO series Winning Time. Please welcome Spencer Garrett. Yay. Hey, man. Good to be with you. Uh, Happy Spen Monday. Happy Monday to you too, Spencer. I so appreciate your time today. I have been watching you every week on Winning Time. It is such a phenomenal awesome. show. And actually, you and I have a lot in common because you were raised in Santa Monica. I was Santa Monica Brentwood. Grew up, uh, grew up out there. Went to uh, Paul Revere, Pally High. All of it, yeah. Nice. Two of my uncles went to Pally High. My dad and I and my brother were all born at St. John's in Santa Monica. So was I. So all was right. I. Look at yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. I actually went to Pally. I was at Paul Revere Jr. And then I went to Pally for one year. Uh, and then I left, I actually went off to a, a performing arts uh, high school, a boarding school in Maine, like off in the woods in Maine for my, for the last three years of my high school experience. So I was at Pally. I was in, I was in the West coast in Santa Monica Palisades for one year. Then I went off to Maine and I became an East coaster for most of the rest of my life before I moved to LA in 89. Our lives at different times are pretty much parallel. Yeah, yeah. You were a teenager when Winnie Time starting, so you were yeah. watching a lot of this as it actually happened. And then we fast forward a few years later, you booked this role as Chick Hearn. Like a while, I went to the games at the Forum and saw the Showtime Lakers up close in person when I was 13, 14 years old. I started going to those games in the late 70s, early 80s when Magic Johnson came to town. And, you know, it was like going to a rock concert at the Forum. I mean, if you ever went to the Laker games back then, you're a little bit younger than I. So, you you know, but uh, back then, man, it was it was an event. Jerry Buss, who is so beautifully, wonderfully, maniacally portrayed by John C. Riley, uh, You know, he created this whole Showtime basketball thing. So that's what I got to see when I was a kid and be a part of. But I didn't study Chick Hearn until I got the pilot. We actually shot the pilot three three years ago. We shot the pilot in the fall of 2019. Uh, and I had about three months to prepare. So I watched just hundreds of hours of Chick Hearn, whatever I could find of him on YouTube and trying to get the voice and the mannerisms and all of that. So uh, and then we got picked up a couple months later. Uh, HBO gave us an order for 10 episodes and we were supposed to go into production in the spring of 2020. And then COVID reared its ugly head and we shut down for an entire year. So I had an entire year to to do more and more research on him and and find more things about Chick that I could bring to the party when we finally get rolling. You and Adam McKay have a mutual appreciation and respect for each other's work. You meet at the premiere of Vice. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood comes out, you play Alan Kincaid shortly after you book this audition. Adam McKay, who directed Vice, and I went up to Adam and I and I said, listen, I, you know, I'm a fan. I'd love to be on your radar. And he said, well, you are now. And, uh, and then Once Upon a Time came out. And I guess he'd seen me in that and sort of thought of me as this kind of announcery uh, interview guy. And so I went in to read for Francine Maisler, the great casting director, and, uh, and was fortunate enough to get the role. So it was a, it was a, a pretty quick process, but I remember walking up to Adam after the film premiered and, uh, and I'd been such a fan of his, not just, not just his movie making, but Funny or Die, and when he was a writer in SNL, he's just oh, yeah. one of the great minds. And so my generation be, was like Anchorman that was all around. Oh yeah. All of <laughs> Big it. Short. All of it. Oh. Yeah. So no, he's extraordinary. So, um, so now getting to, you know, fast forwarding to three years after that, getting the winning time pilot and then being directed by Adam McKay, it was just kind of a, a, a lovely dream come true. And, and you portrayed the character so well. I mean, Chick was remembered for his rapid fire broadcasting style. Yeah. Phrases such as slam dunk, air ball, no harm, no foul. Those all became common catchphrases. The lights are out, the jello is jiggling, the door is closed, the butter's getting hard. I mean, all of it, yeah. He had there were two two hundred chickisms. Uh, I didn't even do that one in order. There are so many. What is it? The, this game is in the refrigerator. The lights are out. The door is closed. The butter's getting hard, and the jello is jiggling. The eggs are cooling, and the jello is jiggling. There it is. I'm a little out of practice. I got to get back in practice. We we go back for season two in August. So I'm here in New York doing a play uh, for a couple of months, and so my head is filled with the dialogue from this play. I've got once we wrap on this play. I got to get back into Chick Hearn mode. And this is another reason why it's a small world. So uh, my dad, he grew up in L.A., St. John's as well. My grandfather owned Hobie Dallas Chevrolet, where my dad worked before he became a music executive. OK. And my dad's first girlfriend was actually Karen West. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a small he, world. And she actually referred Chick Hearn to my dad about buying a car at one point. No kidding. OK. <laughs> so and, we are we are we are connected through the universe somehow. 
We are. That that's yeah. right, my friend. And also Claire Rothman uh, sell my dad the tickets when she was at the forum during the heyday. And then found this out recently through a friend, but Devon Nixon was on our soccer team when we were kids. And no I No kidding. Uh, oh yeah. Just, no kidding. Speaking of those two actors, how great is how great is Gabby Hoffman? as Claire Rothman and Devon Nixon playing his father, who is just, I mean, he's just wonderful. It's just, a, it's a great, he's a terrific actor and also a great basketball player, which doesn't hurt. Um, but it was interesting because I think when we shot the pilot in 2019, I think Norm Nixon, Devon's father, was not really crazy about this project being made. As yeah, I'm sure you've heard, there's some controversy. Some of the players, Jerry West, Kareem, Magic, they're distancing themselves from this project for their own personal reasons but Devon is bringing his own spin on his father's take to it uh, it's interesting to see how people are responding to it it's not a documentary we're not making a documentary with this show I mean it's based on Jeff Perlman's great Showtime book and and it, it's got that great Adam McKay spin on it so I hope that uh, I hope eventually Jerry West and and uh, Kareem and Magic and some of the some of the detractors I hope they come around and start to enjoy the show for what it is it, it's so real to me the way it shocks I me mean, again i was a, i do remember magic of course i mean i was a little kid when a lot of that was happening it was right getting yeah. the uh, the dream team i guess my era was really like the kobe bryant era and then sure. uh, magic was always around i mean just different friends different circles i had neighbors, yeah. i had a friends who were neighbors with him at one point in time i'd, I'd run into magic a few times and especially i'd with a 24-hour fitness i'd always see him at the gym always so polite such a gentleman yeah and and even it's those little things the cinematography the intro it just takes you back to this time and it's incredible isn't it oh yeah the cinematography i mean it looks like you're watching a vhs tape i mean the way it's it's shot it's shot on film and it's also shot on 16 millimeter and 8 millimeter uh all of the all of the different camera you know the camera work is uh is really uh revolutionary it's really amazing what they've done big of the 16 millimeter actually just shot a horror film on 16 millimeter with one of your once upon a time co-stars kansas bowling who played blue one of the manson girls Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she was terrific. Oh, she's great. Yeah, we just yeah, wrapped the movie great. together, the girl next very door. Very cool. Good for you, yeah. man. That's Thank great. you. Spencer, it's so great having you on the show. You've had such an established career. You've had so many incredible performances. I, mean, I just remember watching you in Air Force One when I was a kid. We were in the same audition room at one point. I was a little intimidated. This is back maybe 10 really? years. You, me, Mina Suvari, someone else. I think I had got, they called me in. I think I was there. For, I, I was like, I like take him. I knew I knew who you were. I was a little starstruck. Like, no, take Mr. Garrett first. But um, this is at Fox Studios. I I, re I remember being in a waiting room, and Mina was there. What was the project for? Do you remember? I, you know, I don't remember what the audition was. It was after American Beauty, I think. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. This was about 2011. Yeah. 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 So I, but I remember seeing Mina there because uh, I was friends with a couple of the other actors from America. So you, you were in the same room. I mean, that's again, our, our worlds collide again. I love it. Who got the gig? Do you, do you know who got the gig? I don't know who got the gig. That is the one that got away, but I ended up booking this uh, Shannon Doherty movie a few months later. So I was like, okay, nice. you know, the, the you universe go. was good. I got to add a boy. Yeah, exactly. You know, I grew up good watching 90210. So I got to do a scene with Brenda. So that's what mattered. Excellent. Excellent. Good for you. Can you tell us anything about the play? That I know uh, Jason Alexander's directing it. Yeah, Jason Alexander directed. He actually just left yesterday. Uh, we were in at Manhattan Theater Club in New York for three weeks rehearsing. Uh, and then we brought the play out here, uh, rehearsed for a week at the actual, at the Bay Street Theater. So we're at the Bay Street Theater in Sag Harbor. It's called Windfall. It's written by, uh, the playwright's name is Scooter Peach. I kid you not, that's his real name. His real name, his first name is Harold, I think, but he goes by Scooter. It's an insane comedy. It's a very dark, black, pitch black comedy about five office workers in an office in Columbus, Ohio, in the mind numbingly a drab world of data entry. And they've been working for this, this ogre, this absolute bastard of a boss, me, uh, his name is Glenn. They've been working for me for 10 years and they're just dying to get out of their stultifyingly dull situation. So uh, one of the workers has a, has a vision uh, that if they all pool a certain amount of money on lottery tickets, there's a half a million dollar uh, or half a billion dollar po uh, Powerball, $500 million. And if they pool a certain amount of money, uh, they will win. In his vision, he, he envisioned that they actually would win this Powerball and they could get out from under my thumb. And that's the first act. That's the setup. And then the second act, uh, not to give too much away, but... Uh, wackiness and mayhem and uh, blood and violence ensue uh, in a very comical, over-the-top, 
crazy way. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's just, it's a big kind of door slamming farce. It never stops moving for two hours. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. So we opened on Saturday, great house, a lot of fun kind of celebrity friends came out, uh, out here in the Hamptons. And we're going to run until the end of June and then hopefully move it off Broadway. You're such an inspiration, Spencer. I really can't thank you enough for your time today, For especially of all days on your days off. You're nonstop. I mean, you go from this hit show. Now you're doing a play. You're going back to season two. Is there anything that you would like to say to your fans out there? Um, come see Windfall. If you're, if you're in New York, if you're in the New York area, we're a, 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 a lovely two-hour drive out in the Hamptons at Sag, at Sag Harbor at the Bay Street Theater windfall it's a great time it's i feel like i haven't laughed in six years since the election of 2016 we've been through so much in the last couple of years with covid and everything else so this is a good a good way to just check your brain at the door laugh your ass off for a couple of hours and look forward for season two we start filming season two of winning time in uh, in august it'll be out sometime next spring so uh look out for that i've got a movie coming out called blonde with my co-star from winning time adrian brody uh, Bobby Cannavale and uh, Ana de Armas. That's coming out uh, on Netflix next month. So a couple of good things to look for there. But uh, I would say to the fans out there and to you, everybody just be kind to each other. There's a lot going on in the world right now. It's a crazy time. So hug your loved ones, keep them close, tell them you love them, be kind to each other. That's it. I could have said that better. Oh, Spencer, thank you so much for your time today, my friend. You rock this play. Everyone follow Spencer Garrett. He is a legend. Go see his play. Next month, you can see him in Blonde on Netflix with Adrian Brody, who is also in Winning Time. And I am pumped for season two. You're coming back here, and we're going to have a lot more to chat about when season two comes out, my friend. Right on. Thanks, Cash, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you, Spencer. Peace, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. You know it. (laughs) 